You mentioned uh, Avi Loeb. I forgot to ask you about Oumuamua. Mm -hmm. You know, because you've analyzed specimens from here on Earth, mm -hmm. what do you make of that one? And what do you make broadly of our efforts to look f look at rocks, essentially, or look at objects mm -hmm. flying around in our solar system? Is that a valuable pursuit? Or maybe s most of the stories are, can be, most of the fascinating things could be discovered here on Earth or on other nearby planets. Just going to Oumuamua, uh, you know, I think Avi's insight is an interesting speculation, right? Like I was saying before, people can sometimes look at something and not see it for what it is. Many would just look at that and say, oh, it's an asteroid and dismiss it. There was something odd about the data that Avi picked up on and said, well, here's an alternative explanation that doesn't fit, that actually better fits the models than it just being a rock. Mm -hmm. You know, and to his credit, he just has ignored the critics because he believes the data is real and is using that then as a battering ram to go after other things. So I think that's, I think that's great, you know? Yeah, I, uh, what, what is his main conclusion? Does he say it could be of uh, alien extraterrestrial origin? Is that his- Well, that's idea? one of the things. I mean, he, you know, he's explained how it could be a light sail. Um, right. And a light sail is certainly within near human capabilities to make such a thing. I think Yuri Milner, is, he's a Russian billionaire. He's involved, I think, in a project to make light sails with laser, you know, to, to uh, launch them with laser power, essentially, uh, towards Alpha Centauri, mm -hmm. right? So it's something that humans could make. I think Avi's proposal is perfectly within the realm of possibility. I mean, sadly, the thing is, you know, now nearly out of our solar system. Yes, I mean, to me, that's inspiring to do greater levels of data collection yeah. in our solar system, but also here on Earth. It just seems like we should be constantly collecting, collecting data because the tools of software that we're developing get better and better at dealing with huge amounts of data. It's changing the nature of science. I mean, in, Collect all of the data. <laughs> right, collect the data. I mean, I, I, um, the Galileo project asked me over the weekend to join, and I did. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm not a specialist in any of the stuff that they're doing, uh, but, you know, in looking at the list of people who are on there, there are really no biologists on there. So at, at some point, if my expertise is required for something. What's the goal and the vision of the Galileo project? Better talk to Avi, but my understanding and just actually looking at the uh, at the sort of the bylaws this morning, literally just got them, um, is uh, number one, collect the data on UAP, and number two, collect data on uh, local, potentially local technological artifacts. I need to look into this. This is fascinating. And Avi is heading the Galileo project. Yeah, have you spoken to him? I've, on this podcast, yes, okay. that was before. I believe is before he was headed. Oh. Is this a new creation? Yeah, the Galileo project was. I think it's about six or seven months old now. Okay, you that's know, amazing. And he's getting a group of scientists together. Oh yeah, to try about a hundred. Oh, it's it's that's it, awesome. Actually, I am. I was looking at some of their stuff over the weekend. I'm I'm shocked at the level of organization that they've already got put together. That's amazing. It looks like a moonshot project. I mean, I've been involved with a lot of NIH, uh, large NIH projects. Um, which involve a lot of people in coordination, and uh, they're putting it together. 